little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial for you. And today we have got the Celtic Weave Bag. Yes, this is actually a lot easier than it looks, and I can't wait to show you guys how to do it. This video is sponsored by Lion Brand. Thank you very much for your continued support over the years. I very much appreciate it. And thank you, my viewers, for joining me today. Yes. So this is the Celtic Weave Bag. Now, the beauty of this design is that ultimately you can make it whatever dimensions you want based on the base of the bag, which is right down here. It is very, very, very simple. And then once you have your base completed, and it is a flat bottomed bag, it's not an envelope. So it does have a nice flat bottom to it. And so yes, ultimately you can make it whatever dimensions you want, which is a really nice little feature there. And for this particular bag, I used, it was Lion Brand's Pound of Love. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the colorway of Waterfall. I thought, oh, how gorgeous is that, right? And for today, I'm going to be starting the tutorial with some more Pound of Love. And this is Terracotta. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put a link to where you can find the yarn in the description box down below with, of course, the timestamps. I always do that. And uh, so we're going to start off with the base. And then the body of the bag is actually rather simple because it's only a two round repeat. Mm -hmm. And then later on this same piece here, I'm going to show you how to finish up the top and add the handles, which I haven't done with this piece because I wanted to do it together with you guys. Yeah, it's very, very simple. There's no sewing involved and uh, it's just, it's an all in one piece. It, it makes it so much easier than sewing on handles, something I do not favor doing. So that being said, um, this is a worsted weight of yarn. It's a weight of four. It's a little bit on the thin side, but um, it is a weight of four. So I'm going to be using a size I 5.5 millimeter hook for this yarn. And uh, anything else? No, I, I think we got it. I think we got everything. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So for round one, we are actually going to start with a base chain. Now, when I was referring before, to you can make this piece as big or as small as you want to. I mean, it could be a small pouch or it could be a beach bag. You know, I mean, that's totally up to you. And the determining factor really is the base chain. So of course, starting with our obligatory slip knot, we need to do multiples of four. That is the magic number, multiples of four. Now for the piece that I showed you just before, I did 20 chains for the center base. So we're going to do 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. Now you're thinking this is a lot smaller then the the bag well we are going to do some increases for the the flat bottom now after doing your multiple of four going to do an additional chaining of four and a double crochet into that first chain right there okay so one two three four so then technically the fifth chain from the hook double crochet. Now this is going to count as a double crochet and a chain space. Okay. So then into that same chain, we need three more double crochets. One, two, and 
and three, chain two, and one more double crochet into that same chain. So we've got a double, a chain space, four doubles, two chains, and another double. And then going to do double crochets all the way down the length of the chain. And then on this end chain is where we're going to do this set of corners and the side here. So let us do that. So this counts as our first double crochet going across. So we have ourselves two. And you can go in just into the top of the V, you know, the, the top loop. That's totally fine. So we've got two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. I'm going to meet back up with you when I'm approaching the end of the chain. Alrighty, so it's just double crochets into each chain until you reach the end, and I'll show you what to do next. Alrighty. Okay, so I just have two more chains left. So we've got this one, and then one more. There we are. Okay, so from here, since we did that last stitch there, chain two, and then into that same chain, that same last stitch there, four double crochets, Okay, so we've got our doubles, our chain two space, four doubles, then chain two, and another double into that same chain. And you can cinch this tail up, bring it together a bit. And now we're going to do double crochets on the other side of the chain going this way. So we already did this one here. So this is going to be the next double right here. So now what I like to do is technically you could go underneath just the one loop. I like to go underneath both loops like so. for each double crochet all the way across. So what it amounts to is you're going to have the, the sides, the width, okay, is right now it's four double crochets. And the length on the front and the back of your bag is at the moment 20 double crochet stitches. So this is really all that you are doing for round one. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of rounds where we're going to do some increasing and then a bit of stabilizing, which will make a bit more sense later when we come to it. And then we're going to do the actual body of the bag. That's that's the fun part. Now, like I said before, you can make this bag as big as you want to. However, keep in mind that because of the nature of this particular stitch, it is a textured stitch, so it eats up yarn. It is a little bit of a yarn hog, which is why I opted for using Pound of Love, because it has a lot of yardage. So I figured it was a safe bet. All right, so we are just about at the end here. I just need to do this last double crochet here. And then slip stitch into the third chain from the bottom. One, two, and three. And technically that gives us only one chain space, whereas this is two, but it actually looks a lot neater this way. So into that third chain, slip stitch.
right into there. And there you have it. And then of course, yes, you can tighten this up a little bit. And so yes, on either end, you should have four double crochets. And then along the length on either side, you should have a total of 20 double crochets if you are following these dimensions. Now, of course, we will be doing several rounds, so it will be growing out at the corners uh, as we do several more rounds. Alrighty, so let us proceed to round two. Okay, round two. I'm going to actually start by doing a slip stitch into this corner space here and a chaining up of two. And that is gonna actually count as a double crochet. If you chain up three, it will actually uh, be a little bit too loose in my opinion, you know, but whatever works for you. So I'm gonna chain up two and then do another double crochet into this chain two space. So we've got two doubles in there, chain two, two more doubles into the chain space. So two doubles, chain two, two doubles, then a double crochet into each of these four doubles. Okay, and then when you reach the corner space, again, it is two doubles into that chain space, chain two, and two more doubles into the same space. And then all along this side, just one double per double. Very, very simple, very, very cut and dry. And it's only at the corners that we are going to be doing any sort of increasing. Now, when I initially said that the important thing is that your base chain for the center spine of the bottom is a multiple of four, well, we are increasing by four on each side for every round that we're doing. So it doesn't matter how large you want your base to be because it's just, it's gonna keep increasing four stitches per side because over here, we'll take a look back here. So we had four stitches, right? Well, now if you count it, it's two, four, six, and eight because we're increasing two on each side, just as we're going to be increasing two here and then two here and then two here and two here, two here, and we already have the two here. So the increasing totally works. So I just have a couple more stitches here. And then when you reach the chain two space, two doubles, chain two, two more doubles into that space. and then one in each. So in this case, it's four. Okay, and then we've reached the corner space again. So two doubles, chain two, two doubles.
Okay, and then for this side, yep, just one double per double until we reach the end, and we can do a slip stitch join to our first double. And really, that's it as far as round two is concerned. Round three, just as easy. In fact, the rest of the, the base is really, really quite, quite simple with a few alterations as we get closer to starting the body of the bag, which, like I said, that's the, the stabilizing, and that will come soon enough. Don't you worry about that, because there aren't that many rounds to the base. All right, we're almost done here. Just got to pull out a little bit more yarn. Bear with me, folks. Okay, a few more. Alrighty. Okay. And just got to go into this last double crochet here where we slip stitched into. There we go. Now also, it would not hurt to double count your stitches on each side, just to make sure, at least initially, because there's nothing worse than getting really far into your project and then realizing, oh, I made a blunder. All right, so then going to slip stitch into the next stitch and then slip stitch into that chain two corner space. Okay, so if you're following these dimensions on either side of the, the length sides, you should have a total of 24, and on the, the width sides, you should have eight. All right, let us proceed to round three. Okay, round three. All right, so the stabilizing round is actually what we're about to do. We are going to still be increasing, but we're not going to be adding any more chain spaces in the corners because this is actually the last of our increase rounds. Now, if you want to, by all means, you can make this even bigger. Um, I decided to leave off at about this size here, you know, wide enough for a book, um, some light groceries, um, you know, nothing too terribly major. But yeah, you can go bigger if you want to, and you would still be maintaining your increments of four. So that's not a big deal either way. So we are going to start round three by chaining up two and then into this corner space here, three more double crochets for a total of four. Because we need to keep that count consistent. All right, so we've got four doubles into that corner and then a double crochet into each stitch as per usual. And then when you reach the next corner space, which I'm almost at, when you reach your next chain two corner space, just four double crochets into that corner space. Like so, because that way you're still increasing, but you're not going to be adding these corner holes anymore. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of this round off camera. And basically it's just following suit, double crochet into each double crochet, four double crochets in the corner space, double crochet into each double, four doubles in the corner, 
double crochet into each double, and then slip stitch to the top of this first chain two, which yes, it does count as our first double crochet. And if you want to, by all means, count your stitches, make sure that they are where you want them to be, and then I will meet back up with you for round four. Alrighty. Okay, round four. This is the last of the easy rounds. <laughs> it's okay. I will walk you through it. You know I will. Don't worry. All right, so for round four, going to, again, chain up two, and that's going to count as our first double crochet. And then, quite simply, just do a double crochet into each double crochet all the way around. No increasing, no decreasing, nothing fancy nor schmancy. Nope, just one stitch per stitch. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because it gives us an easier foundation to work in when we're going to be doing the Celtic weave stitching, the front post treble crochets, especially in the corners, because if we did it right now, the corners would be all bunchy. And I find that by doing this, by sort of spreading out these four double crochets in the corners, just a little bit, you know, giving them some breathing room, it will enable us to do the following round a little bit easier, and it sort of brings our previous increasing to sort of like a nice plateau, if you will. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the rest of this round off camera. It's just a double crochet into each double crochet stitch. And then when you've come all the way around, this would be your last double crochet stitch. And then just slip stitch into that top second chain of our first double, just slip stitch into there. And that will conclude round four. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit, and then the real fun starts. <laughs> All right, see you in a bit. All right, so let the fun begin with round five. <laughs> All right, so for round five, I'm going to start with a chaining up of two once again. All right, so now it's all a matter of increments of four. Like I said, that's very important. So this is our first double right here, technically speaking. So we've got one, two, three, and four. We're going to be working in three and four and then one and two. Yes, that sounds weird, but that's how it works with this stitch. All right, so we're gonna be doing front post treble crochets. So yarning over twice, and then we're gonna be going around that third post. Okay, this does count as one. So one, two, and three around the third post, a front post treble, So that's three times, yarning over twice, then around the next one, pull up a loop, pull through, pull through, pull through. Now, the reason why we skipped those first two is we need the stitches to cross each other. So we have the second two. Now we need the first two. So again, we're going to be doing front, sorry, we're going to be doing trebles, but we're going to be going around the back. So essentially it's going to be a back post. Now there are two ways that you can do this. One of which is easier than the other, which is what I'm going to show you. So yarning over twice. Now I'm going to show you what I used to do, which is a, um, <laughs> it's a much more difficult version, but I'm going to show you anyway. So around this first one, the first of the four going around through the hole that we created, that arch, and then around the post, and then pulling up, that's the post still, and then do our 
front post crossed over front post treble crochet. Now, yeah, it's a lot more painful than it needs to be. I'm going to do the other one just to show you what it looks like. So again, going around that second one, around that post, and then pulling it up. See, it's very fiddly. It's like it works, but it's not the easiest technique in the world. And so you can see that we have these two that we just did, and these two that we did initially, and they are crossing each other, okay? So that is one way that you can do it. Now, the way that I would recommend, which is the way that I'm going to show you, is after doing your two initial front post trebles, we're just gonna go into the tops of these two stitches here. Makes it a lot easier. So yarning over twice, and going into the top of this first stitch right here, okay? So, but we do have to go around through here and then into the top of that stitch. And it's still a little bit fiddly, yes, but it's not nearly as bad. And also you can go in from behind if that helps. But I'm a glutton for punishment, so going to go in through the top right here with my stitch. There we go. So I'm into the top of that stitch and it is still crossed over. And then yarning over twice and then going into the next one. The first one's always hardest because that's where we slip, sti slip stitched into. So into that second one, to the top of that stitch with our treble. And so we have our two pairs of stitches, our trebles crossed over. Now the first one's always the hardest, but it gets a little bit easier thereafter. So the next set, okay, so we just did these two, right? So we've got these two and these two. Now we need to do the next set of four. Okay, so it's gonna be, we've got one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna do three and four and then one and two. So around this third post, treble, front post treble, And then treble, from post treble around that next one. Okay. And then we need to do stitches one and two with trebles. So because we already have ourselves established, it's a little bit easier. So going around underneath and then into the top of stitch one with the treble, yarning over twice, going into the, into the top of stitch two with the treble. So now we've got two pairs crossed over. All right, let's do a bunch more, shall we? Okay, so we did those. So now we need to do the next grouping of four. So going around that third post with a front post treble, boom, 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 yarning over twice, going around post number four, boom, 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 yarning over twice, then going to the top of one and two. Here's one. Into the top of the stitch. Yarning over twice. Going into the top of number two. Okay. The next grouping of four. 
Okay, around post number three. Yarning over twice. Going around post number four. Yarning over twice, going into the top of number one. Yarning over twice, going into the top of number two. Now, the next round is considerably easier. I will say that. So let's just do one more grouping of four. Just as I have been. Okay, so that is really what you do for the rest of this round. So we've done one, two, three, four, five groupings of our sort of Celtic twisted stitches are, are sort of, they're sort of cabled, if you will. So what you're going to do is keep going in your groupings of four all the way around and I'm going to do most of the rest of this round off camera. And when I reach about here, I'm going to show you the end of the round. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I've been working my way all the way around doing the exact same thing. I'm almost done with round five. So I just have, I think, two more pairings to go. But I thought, let's do them together. So going around post three with my front post treble. Post four. Now, of course, you know, you can always pause, you can rewind. As I said, I will be putting the timestamps in the description as always. So if you ever, you know, feel that I'm going too fast, well, that's the beauty of video. So going around, well, into the top of one and then two. Into the top of one. Now also, uh, I do of course have a tutorial on how to do this same stitch as a hat. And that also will be in the description box down below. All right, so I got that one done. Just one more to go. Okay, so skipping the first two, going to that third post right around there. Boom, boom, boom. Yarning over twice, round post four. Boom, boom, boom. Yarning over twice. Going into the top of one. And then into the top of number two. And then quite simply to finish off round five. Now we're not going to be dealing with this first chain two. We're going to ignore that one. We're going to slip stitch into the top of this first front post treble that we did. Just slip stitch right into the top right there of that stitch and slip stitch. Okay. And this is approximately how your piece should look at this point. All the way around looks lovely 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 all right so now the next round is considerably easier in my opinion so let's scoot on to round six all right 
Okay, round six. I'm going to start by doing a slip stitch into the next two stitches. So we did our join, so slip stitch into the next, and then one more. Okay, so chain up two. And now we're going to be working with these two and these two. It's always in groups of four. So one, two, three, four, right? Okay. So we're going to be again doing front post trebles around this post and this post to begin with. And then we're going to be working around these two stitches. So again, it's three, four, one, two. That's the ordering here. So around post three, front post treble, front post treble around four, Okay, now we're going to actually front post treble around one and then two because they need to cross over in the opposite way because they were crossed over like this. Now we need to go like this in order to get the, the woven look. So yarning over twice, going around the first post, which is, as I said, a lot easier than the last round, but we got to start from somewhere, right? Then yarning over twice and going around post two. So now they are crossed over in the opposite way, which is exactly what we want. Okay, next grouping. So we have these two and these two sort of scoot back here. Okay, so it's three, four, one, two. So let's go around post three with our front post treble. And then post four. And then post one. and then post two. Ta -da. Okay, let's do a couple more. Okay, so around post three. And be sure that you're doing trebles, otherwise the stitches won't be long enough to cross over. Okay, so we did three and four, now we need to do one and two. Round one. There we go. And then around two. Okay, and then around post three, around post four, around post one. And then around post two. And that is all there is to it for round six. So you can see it's already crossing over really nicely. It looks woven. It looks gorgeous. And I love it. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to do the majority of the round once again off camera. And I will meet back up with you around here or so, okay? I will see you shortly. Be right back. Okay, so I'm almost done with round six, but of course I wanted to touch base with you as far as finishing this. So we have 
three, four, one, and two. So around post three, front post treble, once again. Doot, do doot, and do doot. And then around post four. And then around post one. Sometimes you just gotta scoot those stitches back. There you go. So around post one. And then around post two. I know that the order is weird, but if you look at it in increments of four and their order, it kind of makes more sense that way. All right, so we've got our last two, these two and these two back here. And then we have our slip stitch join to finish the round. So again, around three. And then around four. And then around one. And then around two. Okay, and then to finish off round six, going to slip stitch into the first of our stitches because we've got these two and then we've got these two. Ignore this chaining of two. We're gonna go into the top of this stitch right here with our slip stitch. And there you go. And that is the end of round six. Now, rounds seven and eight, that is the repeat for the rest of the body, which is essentially what we just did. But um, with round five, we had to work around posts that weren't really established yet. So we're going to do rounds seven and eight. Um, you know, going to give you a cursory look at them because it's essentially the same thing as what we've just done. Okay, so let's go on to round seven. Okay, so round seven, it's not going to be anything tremendously new, but uh, you know, I like to be thorough. So we slip stitched into the stitch, slip stitch into the next two stitches. So we already went to this one. So slip stitch and then slip stitch into this first going to the upper left, chain up two. All right, so now we're gonna be working with these two back here and these two in the front. So around, again, three, four, one, two. So around three with a front post treble. And then around four. There we go and then around one and two in the top of the stitches. Into one, and then into two. Okay, going on to the, the next two, we've got one, two, three, four, so around post three. And then around post four. And then into the top of one. There we go. And then into the top of two. Always with our trebles. Okay. Around post three, because again, one, two, three, four. So around three. Around four.
into the top of one. and into the top of two. Around post three, one, two, three, four, so post three. Around post four. into the top of number one, come on, thank you, into the top of two. And that's really all you do for the rest of round seven. Keep losing my stitch, my goodness. Yeah, that's all you do for the rest of round seven with a slip stitch at the end, just as we have been doing. So you can see it's really starting to do the whole woven look thing. So your last grouping would be, this would be one and two, three and four right here. Now be sure to ignore this chaining of two. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way around. I'll meet back up with you and we'll finish up round seven together. Okay. And then we'll do a bit of round eight as well, just to be clear and thorough. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. So we're almost done with round seven here. This is where we first started. So we just have two more to go. So again, around posts three and four with my treble front posts. There we are. And then one and two into the tops. One and two, there we go. And then the last pairing, one, two, three, four. Now again, do not be fooled. Ignore this chaining of two. Just go, you know, just ignore it completely. Just go around post three. This is why I wanted to finish the round with you so that you were sure not to succumb to that chaining of two. Just ignore it. All right, so I've got three and four, and then I need to go into the tops of one and two. And I didn't quite go into that stitch there. Hang on. There we go. So this is one. And then into two. And that chaining of two, really, it just blends in to the rest of the piece. That's the chaining of two. You hardly even notice it in the grand scheme. So now all we have to do is slip stitch into the top of this first one here. And there you go. That is the end of round seven. Okay, round eight, very much like round six. Slip stitch into the next two stitches. Chain up two. And so we're gonna be working into these two and these two back here. So again, front post in three, front post in four, front post around one, and then front post around two. The first one's always a little bit tricky, 
starting off the round, but then it gets easier as you go along. Okay, let's do a couple more. So one, two, three, four. So front post around three. Front post around four. Front post around one. Sort of scoot your stitches back. Front post around one. And then front post around two. There we go. Front post around three. Front post around four. Front post around one. And then front post around two. And that's really all there is to it for the remainder of round eight. And then of course you would continue going on in the same fashion around three, four, one, two. And then I'm gonna show you the last little bit for round eight. And that's all you have to do for the body of the bag, okay? So I'm going to do the rest of this round off camera and I will meet back up with you for the finishing and I'll be right back, okay. All right, so we are on the home stretch of round eight. So again, going around post three, boom, ba -da boom, ba -da boom, post four, do 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 do. Post one. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. You just gotta pull those other posts back a little bit. So around post one. Do 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 do. And around post two. Mm-hmm, 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 and then one more to go. All right, and again, ignore that chaining of two that we did initially on the previous round. And really, this is what you do for the rest of the body of the bag. And you can make it as tall or as short as you wish. Totally up to you. Keep in mind that as far as the length is concerned, we are of course also going to be adding handles and a, a slight rim to the top. Not much, but a bit. All right, so then slip stitch into the top of this stitch here. And there you go. So that concludes the first part of this bag tutorial. And as always, I hope that you enjoyed what you have learned thus far. And Thank you, Lion Brand, for sponsoring this video. Thank you once again. I do appreciate it. And thank all of you for joining me today. Yes, if you liked what you've learned so far, please do give a little thumbs up button down below. You know I appreciate your appreciation. And of course, also, as I said before, the timestamps for this tutorial are in the description box down below. Alas, no, I do not have a written pattern, I'm afraid, but we do have video visual representation. Yes, um, and do stay tuned for part two of this tutorial, where I'm gonna show you how to finish up this bag. Um, I keep wanting to say blanket for whatever reason, <laughs> but finish up this bag with the top edging and the handles. And uh, you know what to do until next time. I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe.
take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, and have a good one.